Ian, four games in, it seems like a good time to take a bit, bit of stock ahead of the weekend. The first question I've got for you is, do you know how many separate players have made an assist so far this season? Four games in. Four games in. Um, do you want me to name them? Go on, if you can. Ruben. Chicks. Dion. Cal. Four. Uh, Ed Francis, Carl Cameron, Matt Palmer. Seven. I think it's eight. Is it eight? It is eight. Who am I? Hold on, wait. I'm missing one. Jim O'Brien. Jim O'Brien for what's yeah. Okay, eight, yeah. Mm. Are you happy with that? I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it shows that we a lot of people are contributing to the creating of goals and it's a lot of different types of goals. Some intricate play some have been balls uh, longer balls um, so I think it shows a variation of where the goals are originating from and the kind of goals that we're scoring so I think four games in ten goals eight different assists is is pretty good really mm -hmm. obviously you, your teams have a reputation for building up from the back and, mm. and being patient but I think we've seen particularly against Aldershot at the weekend and uh, the away game at Barnet Direct balls forward were giving us a lot of joy. You know, wh where's the balance come in for you from retaining possession but then playing purposefully forward hmm. in a direct fashion? I think it's, I think it's trying to cut the line where it's just aimless direct balls and a and a good pass. And like, it's easy to say building up from the back is high risk because sometimes we're going to lose the ball in our half. But what you're finding is teams are trying to press us now. They're trying to work us out and press us. So Torquay tried to press us. They end up with a man less after 20 minutes. Even though they got a bit of success in the first 20 minutes, they ended up with a man less because they left it three versus three and we went a little bit more direct with a pass and then we create the red card. And when older shots stepped higher on us and stopped us playing through, but it was because we're trying to play from the back, we create the, the teams to come higher. But then we really have to exploit the space in behind. We have to be... It's nothing wrong with doing that. So I think it shows a variation. I think we could have done it more against Aldershot in the first half. And when we saw where the spaces were, it was why we changed. So I think the, the it's there's a difference between a long pass and a long ball for me. And, and I think I certainly want to encourage more long passes to runs in behind when teams play high against us. That's It's a, it's a way to combat a high press. We saw it often last season, but you know, it sort of reared its head probably for the first time this season at the weekend, the early Ian Birchnell <laughs> tactical switch and early substitutions. Obviously, this time it's from a back three to a back four. How many options do you feel like you've got available to you tactically with this group of players? A lot. A lot more than I had last year, if I'm honest. Um, I think that we have a lot more variation in the, the players that are coming into the pitch and what they can change. And... I, and yeah, the early change again. You know, I changed two at half time against Torquay. Changed uh, a player again. Brought a defender off. Put an attacker on at half time. And it's a little bit because I, I think if something isn't working, or I feel like something can work better, I don't see the relevance to wait until seventy minutes as the clock ticks to just do it with twenty minutes to go. I think if it's more proactive and braver just to say right don't think this is working and the player that comes out Bryn's got a knock anyway but to be honest we were going to make that change no matter what um, and go to a, a back four front three and somebody had to give and it wasn't a performance issue it's just tactics and, and to exploit space so I'm uh, you know I'm happy to see something and change it if I feel it needs it straight away Mm. Plenty of goals scored, obviously. A lot of the talk yeah. a bit about Kyle Wooten, who's started fantastically well. Right at the top, as you'd expect, of the goal involvement table at the minute, Cal and Ruben, who is a fantastic new song been developed for yeah, you, which I'm yeah. sure you've heard sung I've from heard the terraces it, yeah. in reference to you. Do you think those two players are firing on all cylinders yet? They're disjointed. Ruben had a disjointed pre season. Obviously, yeah. Cal's coming back from a long time out. Do you think we've seen the best of them yet? No, I think uh, I have to say it's a good song as well. Um, first time I was sent it, it was I can't remember the lad that was singing it. It looked like he was at a wedding or something, but it was uh, it was a great a great rendition of it, and it did get stuck a little bit in my head that one, um, much to my annoyance of having the Callum Rubin stuck in my head. Um, but no, there's a lot more to come. I think you know we have to understand that Cal's going through the first set of games in a long, long while, and and he has two goals, he has an assist. Ruben has two goals and two assists, so. I think the the 
they've done a lot of good work. They, they're going to have to understand that teams are going to try to stop them and deny them space and make it really frustrating for them because they're. But because you can see when that's happening, we're getting assists from other areas from you, Jim O'Brien, Ed Francis, Adam Chicks, and when he was on. So. Um, I think there's a lot more to come. I think that they can keep getting better. They're not where they probably want to be or where we want them yet. But I think that's a good thing that we, we're still creating and scoring and, and we think there's more to come from key players like that. Obviously, we're a club that's big on analysis. Um, Earlier on in the season, looking at a position such as Weymouth on Saturday was difficult because you didn't really have much to go off. Are we now getting into the realm now of having more information on opposition teams and, and you and the analysis staff being able to do more in-depth sort of previews of games for the lads? Yeah, it's it's much better now after you know three four games. So we've just been sat down now actually with Zhao and and uh, Alex and and Doyle and we went through. Weymouth and we've looked at the game against Solihull, looked at the game against Grimsby, so just get a bit more detail around them and, and how they've started and even though it's the same coach and some of the same players as last season, I still think there'll be some variations in how they're playing early on and now we're getting, a, it's a bit easier to, to see some of the individuals and the way that the teams are setting up after a few games. On the flip side of that, other teams know more about us, don't they? Yeah. So how do you coach that level of unpredictability into the team? Um. I think we have to know what we're good at and, and I think we, we want to play our way. We don't compromise too much on that. But then it's, you know, we saw we, we had a system change at half time on Saturday. I think that shows that we've got a lot of flexibility. We, we can just change system if we feel it's relevant to do so. Um, so I think we can keep an element of unpredictability. We can move players around in different positions to gain an advantage. So, But we, we focus very much on how we want to play and, and yeah, we're going to stick with that. We're going into the weekend unbeaten, obviously not trying to jinx anything here, but it's it's always a nice thing to have, isn't it, to, to, to have a reputation for being difficult to beat. How valuable is that for you, Ian, or do you not place so much emphasis on that, you just go into every game wanting to win? Basically, I uh, go into every game wanting to win. Uh, being unbeaten is OK. You could be unbeaten after 10 games and just have won two and have a load of draws, and actually it's not great, if we're honest. So... I think too many draws can be a problem. I think that we want to go and try and win games and I'd rather be a bit more bot like at 1-1 at the weekend we take off a defender go put forward on. If we're that brave every game, I think we'll win more than we'll we'll end up drawing, but we may lose one or two on on the way, but it more wins is better, so we want to pick up wins and and I think that's got to be our focus. So it's nice to be unbeaten. We have two draws in there that you know we prefer to have wins of course. Um and but you know, we, we, every game is a tough game, so we have to respect that being difficult to beat is also a great thing. Does it feel like you've got your, your feet firmly under the table here at Knox now? And if so, how much are you enjoying the job, the club, being around the city? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, the first, probably the first month was a bit of a whirlwind. You know, I've come into teams mid-season once before, um, but this was like game, game, game and a lot of new information but I think I feel like now I've settled down I think people around the club know me and the way that I work and, and it's a brilliant environment it's a great football club to be at I, I, I enjoy being up in, in Nottingham and, and the work around I think it's just a, a fantastic football club with great fans and, and the, the whole project around it feels exciting so when I came back to England it was what I felt I was looking for and I think I've, I've found it in, in Notts County so I'm, I'm really really happy with the, the work here. We're expecting probably around 500 away fans yeah. at Weymouth on Saturday which is an unbelievable effort. Um, how, how much have you been impressed with not only the away support but the home support as well in the limited number of games that you've had with, with crowds back in? I think it's great you know I being abroad for, for seven years the, the atmospheres are different um, some of the clubs we went to, you know, the bigger clubs in Sweden had unbelievable atmospheres. But in general, there's a difference with the uh, level English of passion, football. Yeah, and the, the feeling around the match day and the tribalism. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Be, because also in Sweden there wasn't so many away fans because the distances were crazy. Like, you know, we were flying to every game, so I, you didn't really get certainly the clubs that I was at that kind of tribalism with the two sets of fans. So it does feel different, and when we're taking so many away fans and the environment and atmosphere that they create, you know, it is for me. It's been it's been brilliant to to be back in England and and experience it firsthand as a coach. Well, we wish you all the best at the weekend. Fingers crossed, it's a positive week in the training ground and three points on Saturday. Thank you.